Hi, welcome to Access Design. We are the developers of Anima, the fastest standalone crowd simulation software in the Arcvis industry, and Metropoli, our line of ready post and rig 3D characters that add life to your renders. This is the second installment of our Metropoli tutorial series, in which we are demonstrating all the benefits of using Access characters in your visualizations. We will try to give you some ideas of how they can help you be more creative by not having to focus on the technicalities of placing people into images, but instead save that time and use it for the more creative parts of the process. We talked about angles in the first chapter and this time we will be focusing on lights and shadows. So here we go with chapter number two. Here we are again in our friend Lisa's apartment. She is out of town at the moment, so we have the room to ourselves. We will take this opportunity to quickly demonstrate how many steps you have to make if you want to add light and shadows to characters in the conventional way, meaning place and cut out people in post-production. Let's switch off all the lights except for the floor lamp. Now that we have this scene, we will take a photo of Lisa and place it in the render in Photoshop. It helps if the photo has a neutral light on the character, but this means you have to have or find such a photo, which can sometimes be pretty time-consuming, and the end results of blending it in the image vary, depending on your skill level. After placing it in our scene, the next step is to try and match the light source by painting light and shadows on the character using adjustment layers. We also have to make or paint the shadow, and try to match it as accurately as possible according to the light source. As you can see, there are quite a few steps required in order to try and blend your character as seamless as possible, but you don't need to do any of those if you use a 3D model of Lisa, like in this case. So let's turn off all the lights except for the floor lamp. And voila! Perfect highlights on the character and perfect and physically accurate shadow on the floor without any need for adjustment in post-production. Okay. So far we are talking about just one character, but let's imagine we have a few of those. Now, instead of finding three different photos of a person and trying to blend them into this light scenario in Photoshop, we get perfectly accurate results right out of the render engine. This is a huge time saver, meaning you can focus more on the other aspects in the image making process as this will be taken care of during the rendering time. So this was a quick demo with one light source, but let us show you what happens if you use more of them. Let's place a few more lamps around Lisa. We will use them to showcase how easy it is to illuminate the character regardless of the light direction. Let's turn these on one by one and observe how accurate the highlights are and how perfect the shadow is. Works good from any direction. And of course, we can also combine our light sources, which is opening new ways of presenting our character. As you can see, we get perfect highlights and shadows regardless of the number of light sources. Another really important feature of using 3D characters in your workflow is that everything we talked about so far also applies if we use colored light sources. For example, this is how Lisa would look like if she were to develop an analog photo in a darkroom. So it's one thing to paint highlights and shadows in post-production, but if you have to also color match it to your scene, things can get a bit complicated. By using 3D characters in your scene, you don't have to worry about it at all, as everything gets taken care of during the rendering time, regardless of the number of color of the emitters in your scene. You can see it nicely in this example. Even the shadows are colored and their softness is perfect and physically accurate. And this is what happens if we turn them all on. This is a huge advantage, as it opens new possibilities for creatively lightening your scene. Okay, let's go outside for a bit. We would like to show you how our characters look like if we use them in an exterior scene, which is illuminated by an HDRI image. As you can see, the slight bluish tones of the HDRI are visible on the character, as she is physically present in the scene like the trees to the left and right. And just as those, she's casting accurate shadows, even on curved objects, like the bench behind her. And if we change the HDRI for another one with a slightly different sun position, we can notice the changes in the length of the shadow. We change the HDRI for a one with a dusk scene scenario, getting the same nice results. Again, as we can see in this example, there is no need for painting over your character to blend it in your render. So we are already familiar with genetic experimenting on Lisa because we have cloned her for quite a few times, 
but let's take it a step further and clone her plus shrink all the clones. We can use this Gilligan Lisa picture as a metaphor for a large scale exterior scene. Imagine having to place all these people manually, it could take some time. Pay attention to the shadows of the small clones and how they interact with the curved parts of the wooden planks. It's perfect and it always will be, regardless of the obstacles in your scene. Okay, let's go back inside. Another great thing about illumination in connection to the 3D characters is that any possible obstacles that could be in front of the light source we are using in our scene are also taken into account. These window blinds, for example, are a nice showcase. Their shadow follows Lisa's shape perfectly. And in this House of Cards example, we can see another scenario that would be really painful to recreate in post-production. The shadows are nice and soft and come straight out of the box. It's a really nice feature as it helps the artists create lightning scenarios they would usually get scared of doing in Photoshop. If we go back to color, or in this case, texture emitters, did you ever want to create a TV or a computer monitor scene? Well, now you can, without any stress. And you can also invite some friends over, as many of them as you want, in fact. And if you are more of a fan of larger screens, you can also create a cinema scenario. The characters will intercept a part of the picture and cast the shadow on the screen accordingly. Hey, do you guys remember the disco scene from the first episode? Well, what kind of a party would it be without some lights and a disco ball? Creating disco party scenes used to be so hard, but now it's no problem. We believe that this kind of applications are the strong point of using 3D characters in your workflow, because now you can populate your scenes in ways that were a lot harder before and light your scene in a as complex way as you want, regardless of the color of your light sources or the number of people that are in your scene. You don't have to worry about the technicalities in post-production and you have more time to play with the concept of the image because the characters are illuminated perfectly. If you pay attention to the bottom of the disco ball, you can see that our characters are also reflected accurately in it. So we would like to end this chapter by announcing that in the next installment we will take a closer look at reflections, but also some different types of materials we can use on our characters. Thank you very much for paying attention and you are welcome to join us again next time when we will try to provide you with some new useful tips for using the Axis Design 3D characters in your scene. We would also like to invite you to our website where you can find more than 650 different characters as well as examples of final renders in the gallery. Thank you for your attention and goodbye until next time.